lot to just sit down and film. So I've been really busy. I've been coming back and forth. Uh, or traveling back and forth from Austin to Dallas just because I still have some things that I need to take care of in Dallas or little things that I have to go do. Anyways, uh, I have been vlogging a lot of my Dallas trips and so hopefully that's some good content. Believe me, I had so many cool travel vlogs that I had planned for this summer fall time and then we just had to cancel everything, right? So, <laughs> don't know when that's going to happen. But I have kind of a different vibe today. Um, I wanted to talk about Christianity. So, I've already filmed this and <laughs> I just started over because I just want to make sure that everything that I say is being said the way I want it to be said, the way I intend for it to sound, and not just like, I don't know. I just wasn't really in it either. Like, I, I wasn't really there. It's been really hard to be motivated lately. But I'm back, okay? Not only do I have the Bible, but I also have a pretty cool commentary, which I actually, this is recommended to me by one of my professors in Dallas, and it is amazing. So, highly recommend this. I also have some notes. Um, over what I'm going to be talking about because I want to make sure that I'm as clear as can be when it comes to talking about such a topic because, yeah, yeah. First off, I would like to say that this idea first, or this topic first came to my mind as something that I wanted to talk about when I was, you know, sitting in physical therapy and my uh, physical therapist was talking to me about, um, it just kind of like, the conversation just kind of happened, and uh, I, he, I think he brought up like, oh, like, what are you studying? And I was like, Bible. And he mentioned how a lot of Christians that he's actually come into contact with are pretty horrible. And that made me really sad. I realized that there's a lot of truth to that statement. Not every Christian is great. <laughs> And they don't always have this exemplary behavior that people usually think they do. So I wanted to touch on this topic because with a lot of things that are going on right now in our society, it seems to come up very often, at least in the conversations that I've been having, that Christians aren't really doing much when it comes to these different topics that need to be addressed. Christianity is a label that actually, or to be a Christian, is a label that first came across as an insult actually towards Christians because it is supposed to mean like little Christs, right? Um, and so basically it was supposed to be an insult and then it just kind of cut on. But what it really is supposed to mean, yes, little Christ in the sense that we are supposed to be examples of Christ. And so that's what Christians are supposed to be. Keyword, supposed to be. So not always are we going to be that way. So transformation is something that happens, continues happening, and then will ultimately happen in the end. So let me back up real quick. Basically, when you give your life to the Lord, you are transformed. You are no longer seen as a sinner, but you are seen through through what Jesus did as a sacrifice because when you give your life to the Lord, you are accepting the sacrifice that he made. And so you're saying, I accept that as covering all the sin that I committed, and therefore the Lord now sees you through Jesus Christ. So you have been transformed. But the thing is, Throughout life, you will continue to be transformed. It's not like one day I woke up, became a Christian, and was just perfect. I've made so many mistakes. And so when it comes to that, you you really are being transformed every day by the people around you, by what you read in the Bible, by what you understand through prayer there's just a lot that goes on that will influence your walk with the Lord and therefore influence your transformation so everybody has a different uh, transformation process everybody has a different time it's just very different and it's it looks different with everybody 
So that is the continuing process, okay? And then ultimately, we will be transformed and become like him. It is one of those weird words where not only has it happened, but it's continuing to happen and it will ultimately happen when Jesus comes because that is when we will ultimately be like him, okay? If you could open your Bibles to Mark chapter 11, verses 12 through 21, and it says, On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. And they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple, and began to drive out those who sold and those who bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. And he was teaching them and saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. And the chief priests and the scribes heard it and were seeking a way to destroy him, for they feared him, because all the crowd was astonished at his teaching. And when evening came, they went out of the city. As they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. I remember before I would just skim through it and be like, um, why is it talking about this? That's kind of interesting, but like, I don't see the point. And when I was able to read it during one of my classes, he brought to our attention that it is actually a sandwich method, right? Like sound effects. The first part is when he goes and decides he wants to eat from this fig tree. The second part is what happens at the temple. And the third part is when they realize that the fig tree has withered. When a fig tree grows, usually the figs and the leaves, they grow together. So when it has leaves, it usually has figs. And so what was happening at this moment was Jesus was hungry and he decided, look, that's a cool tree with some leaves. So it probably has figs. And it, he even mentioned, like, it's not the season for figs, so that's interesting, but I'm going to go and have some because I'm hungry. But as it got closer to it, he realized that it actually had nothing. It didn't have any fruit. He gets really mad, he curses it, right? And close that chapter. Now, bear with me. The second part is when he goes into the temple and he gets really mad and he gets mad because he sees all these people selling at the temple. Now, that's where this commentary brings to light some interesting things. So the people that were selling all these different things, there, there's two things to be noted about it. First of all, more than likely, they were asking permission, right, by these head priests, by these head leaders of the church, and were given permission. But usually that was because they were receiving some sort of monetary compensation for it. So not only were the people selling going to receive money, but they were going to give part of that money to those church leaders, not to the church, to the church leaders, okay? And so they were allowing the temple to be used for their own profit, okay? And Jesus saw that and he did not agree with it. Second thing that can be said, many things that they were selling were either going to be used for sacrifice or for some sort of ceremony in the temple and so by selling it there it provided like a shortcut okay and that's what they were what Jesus wasn't okay with is there was almost like a sense of laziness and that they weren't doing what was being asked but taking like an easier route now the last thing that I really think is what made Jesus super angry is that the area that was being used to sell all these things was the only part of the whole area that they were allowed to use for worship and for for prayer. These people weren't being able to pray or worship in that area because people were gaining money out of it and the Lord wasn't okay with it. Now this is the part where you see like he just he gets angry and things do not go well. So that part is it parallels to the way that Jesus brought judgment on the fig tree. Afterwards, the disciples 
make a note that the fig tree has withered. And what this all kind of exemplifies is hypocrisy at its finest. You see a fig tree that looks like it has fruit. And if you look throughout the Bible, the fruit of the Spirit, right? The fruit. It's usually what one gives off as a Christian during that transformative process. The Lord will do something in your life and other people will be able to see it. And that's considered the fruit, okay? So it's interesting that it's a tree that isn't giving off fruit, but gives off the appearance of giving off fruit. And when you look at the church leaders, these are people that were seen as having this great authority and just being these wonderful men of God, right? And um, they kind of weren't really doing what was best for the church. They were profiting out of something that wasn't benefiting the church. They weren't really keeping the church in mind. They weren't thinking about what was best for the people. They were thinking about what was best for themselves. And that's what this story really is about. This whole judgment that, you know, these people were held accountable. In that same way, those Christians that are pretending to bear fruit but aren't really giving off anything, they will be held accountable. And so as a Christian, I would like to apologize because many times Christians do not live up to what they are supposed to, to who they are supposed to represent. We are supposed to represent God, we're supposed to represent Christ, okay? And by not living in a way that exemplifies Him, it's like you're living like this fig tree that isn't producing fruit and you're just playing the part and you're going to church and looking really religious, but you're not actually doing anything that's producing anything. And that's what the Lord despised. That's what the Lord just did not want. He did not want to have this beautiful thing that just was there for decoration but did nothing. You know, and that's kind of what a Christian who doesn't live out what they preach is. And that kind of sounds mean, but if you say that you're a Christian and you're not actually living that Christian life, it's contradictory and it makes other people think of Christianity as a whole being made up of hypocrites. And that's not true. God himself is not a hypocrite. We are not flawless. We are still going through that transformation. And so when we go through that transformation, sometimes we're going to preach something and not necessarily be ready to do it yet. Or we're going to be like, oh yeah, like I'm totally for that, but maybe we're not doing it yet. And when someone catches you in that, it's like you're, represent you're representing everybody. And so that's why I think people have gained such a horrible view of Christianity. Everybody has had those moments where we could have been better Christians and weren't, and we will each be held accountable for that. But I just want you to know that just because one or two or three or how many Christians you've met that have not been what Christianity is all about or have not met your expectations, we are human. We are not God. And while God is not a hypocrite, while God is flawless, we are not, and we are still being transformed. We are still going through that process, and it is a hard process. And so I want to apologize on behalf of all Christians, and I want to let you guys know that if you are a Christian and you feel like you are sometimes a hypocrite, let's read about it. Let's learn what we're supposed to do differently so that we can be better examples of who Jesus is, of who God is, and really get to spread his word without having it backfire and be like, well, you don't really live out what you're saying. Christianity in itself is just a label. And that's not what saves you in the end. What saves you is having an actual relationship with the Lord. And again, that does not mean that you're going to be perfect. That does not mean that you're not going to have times where you mess up and are not giving, you know, any fruit at all, you know. But 
the Lord is working with each and every single one of us. I wanted to leave you guys with this small like lesson. It's very hard to understand the Bible and when I kind of learned what this passage meant, I thought it was so powerful because it shows the kind of God that we have, someone who does not stand for hypocrisy, someone who does not stand for things being twisted and not being done right. And I think that's really awesome. And so if someone out there has been hurt by Christianity or by people who wrongfully represented Jesus, I'm so sorry. But this is what God thinks about hypocrisy. He is not a hypocrite. We are trying to be the examples that the Lord wants us to be, but it's not always that easy. And I'm very sorry if somewhere along the way, someone did not properly represent Christ for you. I hope this was beneficial to you guys and kind of understanding a little bit more about the Bible and what Jesus stands for and who God is. I'm glad to be back and making videos and if this kind of thing is not your thing, I understand. Um, but I'm still glad that you watched and yeah, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye!